So we're going to welcome Andrew McWilliams now to Sustainable UX. He's a New York-based artist and technologist, founder and director of ThoughtWorks Arts, and a founding member of ClimateAction.Tech. His recent art projects explore links between climate change, perception, and society, while his advocacy is centered on support and incubation for climate action in the tech industry. Andrew has exhibited and spoken at a number of different events, and his work has been featured in Forbes, Fast Company, Think Progress, among others. And he's going to talk to us about Climate Action Tech Network and the incubator program and how you can leverage your position in tech to help build a sustainable future. So take it away, Andrew. Thank you. Hi. Yeah, my name is Andrew McWilliams, and I'm going to get straight to it. Here's the case that I want to make to you today. If you're in tech, Whatever your background, wherever you work, whatever your skill set, you have an outsized capacity to make a major impact on climate change. And I mean an outsized positive impact. So since you're attending Sustainable UX, you might be thinking, well, yes, uh, by writing less energy intensive algorithms or by making more efficient designs. And that is hugely important work and we should absolutely be doing it. But that's not the argument that I wanted to make to you today. I mean that simply by virtue of your position, as a professional working in tech, you have a really large amount of power to affect this crisis. I'm also not talking about transferring your skills or switching careers. I'm talking about power that you can leverage from your current job, from your current field of expertise, and even from your current department. In fact, it's really highly beneficial for you to contribute from where you are, because where you are right now, you're already part of a much broader network of the professional technology community. And that's a really influential network. So I'm going to explain and unpack that today in my talk. And I just want to make sure that we can all see that big picture argument. And then I'm going to explain about how we created this global tech community for climate action called climateaction.tech. And that exists, this community exists to enable you to put these ideas into concrete practice. So let's start with the big picture you know, with the driving force. What is the driving force here? Well, climate change is an immensely urgent crisis. The IPCC reports like these show how we need to transform global energy infrastructure in just over a decade. And that's insane. It's a hugely audacious moonshot, but it's also absolutely crucial because this is the good path and the bad path is far, far harder and way more devastating. Now, we all know this. We see these things and we ask ourselves, well, what can I do? To answer this question, I think it's really important to think about who we are in relation to those that have the ability to actually drive the positive change. So who, you know, on the, in, the, in the big scale at that level of urgency. So who has the ability to drive that transformation? Well, the answer is all of us. It's a group effort. It can't be done by the environmental community alone or any one single group. Communities and sectors across society, like us, like the tech sector, need to network ourselves together inside our communities and then to join outwards to other communities in a common cause. And if we see ourselves in tech as part of this broader effort, we can see that these connections have to go all the way down from this very high level pictured here down to the one-to-one -one of each of us. So let's talk for a moment about what's the role of tech specifically in this broad network. Why are technologists important to be in this picture? What do we have to offer? Well, there's a number of things that put us in a really important and unique position. Economically, socially, politically, many of us are in an elevated position compared to many others. The systems we design and build use a lot of energy, in many cases, a lot of energy, and they can be reshaped or redeployed or changed to reduce emissions. Also, our industry works across sectors. Tech is a core component across industries, so we have influence in many places outside of our direct domain. And also, tech makes news, right? People follow us, and that's for better or for worse. So we should do as much as we can to make that for better. So these are just four reasons that I've selected to highlight today, and I'm sure there are many others. But given all of that and thinking about tech's position in this network, how can we build support and strengthen this larger climate movement from where we are? Well, there's many individual things we can start looking at today. Things like talking to colleagues, developing new practices, attending uh, Sustainable UX, 
helping build sustainability into your company's self-image, its work, looking at ways to reduce emissions at scale in your industry. And these are all incredibly important things to do, but there's nothing particularly new in bringing you there in that list of ingredients. I mean, that's why we're all here at this conference, to learn how to do these things and to join each other on that. But the new thing I'm trying to bring is a new focus on how much we can support and learn from and strengthen each other across a tech sector-wide climate action network and the contribution that network can play in strengthening the broader climate movement. So focusing on that is the reason why we created climateaction.tech. Over at climateaction.tech, we've been linking together a supportive community under this one banner of tech workers just like you and me and of experts and allies and of friends. And it's a great place to go to share your thoughts, to get help thinking through your next steps, and to get actual hands-on incubation from experts to upskill and to learn how to better leverage your position. Or if you are an expert, you can go over to offer access to your knowledge, and there's a lot of exchange that goes on. We're an open network, a volunteer-driven network offering bits and pieces of time to position the tech sector to strengthen corporate sustainability and to support the climate movement. We've got hundreds of members at this point who are employees of well-known tech companies and less well-known tech companies, including in the startup world, in the public sector, and tech professionals in other sectors, people in sustainability and clean tech, we have people who are authors and thought leaders, employees and advocates, college students, technical and creative professionals. It's a really broad mix of people. So where did the network come from? I'm going to show you that, and hopefully you'll see just how organic this thing is. See, I'm an employee at one of the tech companies listed on this slide, ThoughtWorks, and I had been volunteering internally on a green team basis trying to help ThoughtWorks get further on sustainability and climate change. And I was wondering how many other people like there, there were me, uh, like me that there were out there doing similar things in similar companies. And so in March of 2017, I decided to try and find out. And I sent hundreds of emails to people that I didn't know. I searched the web for, for new contacts. I mined LinkedIn. I asked friends and colleagues if they knew people who might be interested. And as you can see on the screen here, like many of these emails bounced and didn't get through. But despite all of those bounces, we had a lot of replies and a core group formed who would then meet and attend the People's Climate March in the USA in April 2017. Now I want to stress here, none of these people are activists, right? We got together for this march because we're concerned individuals who recognized the extraordinary importance of climate change and the technology's role in it, and they wanted to do something to support the cause. And I got them together, and I, I said, I, we, we have to take this picture. Um, so we had contingents in Washington, D.C., and in the Oakland, California marches, and we made signs, and we printed them, and many of us met for the first time, and we started talking about what more we can do. We discussed these ideas publicly, and we caught some press attention, and you can see some examples here. And looking at the interest building up, we realized that we had something important to offer, and it was this, you know, after that meeting at the march, that's what sparked the foundation of climateaction.tech, you know, deciding what can we actually do moving forward. So let's talk about what climateaction.tech actually is uh, and what it's become since then. We have three broad categories of activity. We gather we organize and we incubate. Now remembering that we're volunteer led, these are actually possible steps of entry points of engagement for you to think about. And you can think about these as being small, medium and large level commitments with the smallest on the left and the largest on the right. At the smallest step we gather, we're a community. You can join our Slack, it's an open network, anyone can join. You can find the Slack link on our website. And there are channels in there to introduce yourself, to ask questions, to post and find jobs, to share news and insights, and to engage in discussion. Also under Gather, we're launching a new clean coffee initiative. And it's like lean coffee, but with a C. And these are short, private, online video chat discussions 
with up to 20 global participants all from tech. And again, you can sign up to that via the climateaction.tech website. At the second step in the middle, we have a central organizing node. And this is where we try to learn about and to strengthen and to grow the network and to initiate and coordinate new programs and activities and write up and publish what we learn and to share that publicly on Twitter and Medium. We meet once a week on an organizing call and note that many of us actually only commit one or two hours a week <coughs> and it works uh, on this organizing call. It works because we carefully share the load. So if that appeals to you, direct message me in the Slack after you join the Slack. Lastly, on the right, uh, we incubate. So currently what that means is we run a program where we accelerate tech workers for four months as a cohort. We call it the accelerator, but it's not about startups. It's not about money making. It's a supportive sustainability making accelerator run by volunteers, run for free. With the cohort, we facilitate their thought process. We consult on their position and their ideas. We connect them with experts and we help them to achieve positive change. Again, it's free and it's specifically for people in tech who often have zero experience so far in this space. So now let's dive in a little more deeply on a couple of parts of this. Let's talk about what kinds of insights we're talking about here, and let's talk about how the accelerator works. I want to begin here with a key insight that we discovered when we began as an organizing group. One of our members, an engineer at one of the world's larger social media companies, this employee, who again is an engineer, not a sustainability expert, decided that they wanted to help the company to improve its carbon footprint. So the person started their own makeshift internal analysis of the company. And this employee looked at everything, you know, every carbon emitting entity in the company. And they looked at travel emissions, they looked at data center emissions, they looked at teams of offices for the electricity and heat emissions. And the employee created a simple, a comprehensive report of carbon impact with recommendations and submitted that to leadership. Now, of course, that's huge. It's more than I would personally feel comfortable or confident to do on my own, but this was a very motivated employee and they did it. And for the sake of our example here, it's interesting to note and to see what happens next. So this employee did it and they submitted it to leadership and they waited and they waited and nothing happened. And they were surprised. You know, they, they put together this great report. What was nothing happening? The employee thought that if they just provided the data and made the logical case, that it would spur the change. But they learned that that isn't really how things happen. So they started to investigate. Turns out that the leadership teams did want to do this. Everyone was actually behind it in principle, but their teams weren't oriented in a way that allowed this to rise to the top of the priority lists. So next, the employee took a different tack. They sought out and they interviewed seven or eight other people, other tech companies, companies that successfully implemented sustainability programs. And they asked the people behind these initiatives how they made it happen. From the research, a pattern emerged. The employee found that the most common route to success was much simpler than what they had done. The winning tactic from this small sliver of research turned out to be to make the general case as a verbal argument directly to leadership. It was a, a common thing that they found. This could be like a short phone call or a much simpler version of a report or an ad hoc conversation during a public event. But the request in these conversations was that the company should publish some form of sustainability statement or some kind of public facing um, positioning statement, not even a, a sustainability statement in full. Just a simple thing with no detail, uh, no great amount of detail just yet, but just as a starting point. And what this does is it creates a central orienting point that leadership teams can get around. And it establishes sustainability alongside other company values and makes sustainability a part of the mission that other departments are focusing on. And that's very powerful. So Climate Action Tech, we wrote up this insight as part of our introductory tech and sustainability guide, which we published on Medium. And this article has had one and a half thousand views. And at Mapbox, the open source mapping company, they credited the guide in their write-up of how they went carbon neutral. 
So I want to note that the themes behind this insight include things like carbon accounting and energy consumption and technology choices, as you'd expect. But equally, it's about organizational and cultural change, and it's about strategic introduction and growth of ideas, and it's about team and relationship building. And this is something that we've found, you know, all of the above, all of these things we've, things we've found to be important in other approaches. And as we run more programs and we speak with more people in tech, so many people in our network right now, uh, we see many new approaches and ways forward and we're writing these up. So you're going to find these things either in the guide or in our other Medium posts. Now let's spend a little time talking about the accelerator. We're currently running our second accelerator. Uh, the first was January through April 2018. And this one, again, is a four-month period from Jan through April 2019. Anyone in tech can apply via an open call. It's run online. It's location independent. And the accelerator cohort meets for an hour every two weeks. And we try to achieve or progress towards the cohort's goals. And these are goals that people in the cohort define for themselves and that we help them figure out. People who attend the accelerator come from medium-sized companies, tech giants, nonprofits, the startup world from all over. And these companies are always at different stages of their journeys. Some companies are really struggling with if and how and where to start or maybe just some of the employees within the companies are thinking about that and the company isn't yet. Others, other companies that have focused for many years are already working on emissions reductions, but they know they need to do more. On the initial call, cohort members explain where they're at and we expose them to the world of sustainability and tech. And they do Q and A's with experts and people who have built company programs from the ground up. And we analyze and help the group to figure out their goals and strategies and what starting points they have. And then as they step forward and they need concrete guidance, we connect the participants with specific experts directly. And that could be the director of sustainability from a big tech company or a cultural or organizational change consultant or an emissions analyst or whatever we feel will be helpful to the person at that time. We wrap up in April with a review session where the cohort explain where they've got to and what they've learned and also where they think they're headed next. Last year, one of our cohort members was an employee of Wikimedia, the nonprofit behind Wikipedia, and we supported their efforts to create the organization's first ever sustainability program. And you can see the online announcement pictured here, which was published in the summer of 2018. Here's a quote from Lucas, the employee driving the change. He says, having a peer group to discuss and share experiences and ideas was very valuable to our process. Through climateaction.tech, we learned from sustainability experts about how to work on organizational change from within. And I think that's a great quote that summarizes the program well. And that's success that we want to build on going forward. Now, all of this works only because of the size and strength of our network, which is growing every day and which you should be a part of. Uh, so please join our Slack. The link is on the website. And follow and share on Twitter. Help us get the message out. Our aim as a group is to be inclusive and open. So whether you're a designer, a developer, an analyst, a manager, whether you're junior or a senior, or you're a senior executive, we welcome everyone. And we welcome women, LGBTQ+, people of color, and others who are often minorities in the tech industry. And it's really important to us to be inclusive and open because it's right and because it's best for the community. Everybody learns, we get wider perspectives. What unites us is a belief in the crucial role that technology must play on global warming and the power that people in tech have at their fingertips. So back to the bigger picture and to the original question now. If you want to have a greater impact, what can you do? Our number one answer to this is don't be alone. Things can really start to happen when you find one other person close to you to advocate with, to work with, and to learn about these things with. And you understand that you are part of a community, which is part of a network, which is part of a movement. So given all of that, we really look forward to meeting you at climateaction.tech. And thank you.